Hey everybody, today I'm starting a new series and it's gonna be a tutorial series for the new players or maybe even for the players I've been playing for some time but don't understand some characteristics about the game so to say. I have noticed that the tutorial in the game although it goes over the specifics and over the basics of the game pretty well it doesn't get you ready for the higher tier gameplay so I guess starting from tier 4 and up uh, tier 4 is the first tier that you will encounter tier 6 tanks tier 4 is the first tier where you will encounter derp guns what that means is you will encounter tanks that have a high explosive gun, a howitzer, that will be able to penetrate your tank and one-shot it. Now that won't stay up until every tier. Eventually your tanks will get more armor and high explosive won't do as much damage and well on Tier no, uh, 10, for example, you have 3,000 hit points in the mouse, and there's no tank that can one-shot you unless they amorac you. But that's not the point. That's absolutely not the point. I have noticed that the tutorial in the game is adequate for the first couple of tiers, but of that, not so much. And I have noticed that there are some YouTubers, uh, Quickie Baby, for example, or Lucky Leopard, who go into detail about what you should and shouldn't do but there's no real in-depth tutorial about the game so I will try to make one of those and I hope that it will be good enough for you new players now let's first head into the tutorial and I'm fairly certain that if you just started playing the game um, you either had to go this way so this would be highlighted and you had not, no other option than to go to bootcamp that says return to bootcamp for me because I just exited it I already did the tutorial so let's see what happens Nice little cinematic while you wait. So welcome to World of Tanks. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm just gonna go over the basics of the tutorial here. And it's, it's a pretty decent tutorial. I just did it a couple of minutes back. So it shows you, okay, that's how you aim the tank. Uh, you can zoom with your mouse wheel. It's called the mouse wheel to enter sniper mode. Or you could buy of a press shift and immediately switch between Vehicle sniper controls. mode. WASD, of course, is your movement key. Now I wouldn't recommend you drive through buildings and knock over trees because aim at an enemy vehicle and fire. W uh, well, good enemy players will be able to spot you. Now, with high explosive, as you can see, I can shoot under the tank and still damage him, or I can shoot at the tank and damage him. High explosive will always do damage, by the way, but this is just tutorial purposes. This isn't anything fancy. These aren't the normal gun stats or normal reloads for the Sherman Jumbo. This is just to get you familiar with the game. With the controls. Enemy armor is 
This is just an introduction with the Sherman Jumbo. Victory. So, that was the first battle. Pretty easy, right? Yeah, these were bots, they weren't shooting at you. We got a vehicle. So, basics of firing left mouse button. Let's change the reward. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go for Germany. I know a lot of players will go for Germany pretty soon, or pretty fast. Um, because of the Tiger and the Tiger 2. Some people even for the mouse. I will go into detail about that later, but you might not want to do that because the Germans are pretty high skill, so to say. You... how to put it? You need some understanding about the game if you want to play the German tanks really good. At least most of the German tanks. A lot of ple people also go for the the Leopard line or the Panther line. Um, um, if you want my advice, go for um, the Russians. The, well, almost any Russian line would be good enough. Scroll the mouse wheel to enter sniper mode. But the American heavies are pretty decent too. And a lot of people, of a lot of YouTubers and good gamers, they advise a heavy line to start out with. And I kind of agree with them. Okay, this is important. Like, I can shoot here and I have a high chance to penetrate. I can shoot there and I will bounce. I won't do any damage as you can see I can shoot here and do almost nothing if you're lucky like here the lower part you won't do anything but the higher part you will penetrate so green is good red is not good you will also have orange um, orange will mean that you have a 50% chance to penetrate the enemy vehicle. Um, green, if I'm correct, is 75% or higher. And red is 25% or lower, if I'm correct. You can sometimes penetrate when it's red. But... That doesn't happen very often, so don't rely on it. You need an extremely high penetration roll. Flank and destroy the enemy vehicle. Try to oh yeah, okay. Hit. This is actually, um, if you ask me, a uh, pretty well explained or pretty handy part of the tutorial because. They actually encourage you to get around the side of a tank destroyer. The gun of a tank destroyer, in most cases, is mounted to the front. So it can't shoot to the sides or the rear, in most cases. There are tanks that can. But this tutorial actually shows you, or tells you, that flanking enemy vehicles is extremely handy. Also, she might be able to see. I can't penetrate this front. Um, the front of a tank mostly has the best armor of the vehicle, anyways. Can't penetrate his turret, but I can penetrate his rear armor. Although, it's proving difficult enough. Yeah, flanking tanks, especially heavily armored um, heavy tanks, tank destroyers, 
sometimes even medium tanks is mandatory. Because you won't, sometimes you won't be e uh, able to penetrate that front. <clears throat> One of the first examples that I can think of, which is pretty difficult to penetrate on low tiers, is the Hatzer. It's got pretty good armor for its steer, and it's a favorite among seal clubbers, so watch out for that one. That's some free advice I'm gonna give you. <laughs> so, okay. Researching. Now, almost everything is researched on this. And you can't switch back to the other stuff. So, researching generally makes your tank better. Sometimes you have a choice between, uh, for example, two top guns. Uh, which are equally good, only with differing stats. So, one might have more penetration... Uh, better gun stats and lower damage, while the other does more damage, uh, is slightly less accurate and has a lesser amount of penetration. So it's up to you to find what your preferred play style is. So let's get into the next tutorial battle. <coughs> As you can see, a green marker, high chance of penetration, red marker, damages blocks. It's actually very low chance of penetration, if I'm correct. In sniper mode, it's easier to hit targets at longer range. If you hit tracks um, and the damage is absorbed, there's, there is a chance that you will blow off the enemies tracks you will critically hit them you can do damage and critical damage at the same time but uh, not always you need to be on a right angle to do so um, you can take out guns you can take out viewports if you penetrate at the right side of a turret you might be able to take out crew or the driver if you hit the hull for example um, critical damage will cripple a tank although it's not guaranteed if you hit the barrel it's not guaranteed that you will damage it or destroy it you can destroy or damage uh, the modules um it's not guaranteed though so watch out for that yeah we already know about firing if i'm correct this is the oh yeah we're the one where you need to spot the enemies this is... I had to restart this three times. Because, well, I was a bit aggressive at the start. You have been spotted. And they tell you, okay, you have been spotted. So now you must fight. If you get too close to these guys, um, especially that light tractor, he will um, annihilate you. Oh, well, not, not annihilate you. Uh, if you're not fast enough or you miss a lot of your shots, he will. Uh, oh, by the way, normal players won't let you do this. A normal player won't be so fixated on you in most cases. But a um, little icon that popped up will pop up in a second again. Here it will come. There, the little light bulb, that means that you have been spotted. And that enemy vehicles can see you and most of the times can shoot at you. And, oh my. Okay, so the game actually forces you to do things differently because... Flank the enemy. Um, as you saw, that SU-76 did 105 damage, while its first shot did, did only 30 damage. It will tell you, like, you need to move, you need to do this the correct way, or you will die. Now, the last time I had been able to hold your fire or the enemy will spot you Clear to 
Well, you won't be able to spot me if I can stay hidden in this little bush. This is a little bit cheating, but it will make your um, tutorial a little easier. Especially if, like me... You suck and you lose a lot of hit points. So, that is a way that things can go wrong. Let's continue, let's try again. Let's be a little bit better this time. So it was talking about spotting your enemies. Um, I will go into depth about that as well, um, outside of the tutorial, but as you can see here, this green line is how far your spotting range will go and how easy it will be for you to spot enemy vehicles. You have been spotted. Get ready to fight. And uh, when you are spotted, you will <laughs> you will either want to move Um, for example, a light tank might not want to stay and fight, but a heavy tank will most probably stick around. Not guaranteed, though. I have situations in my heavy tanks where I would rather move away from the action. Let's move to the arrow. Let's be kind enough to move to the arrow. As you can see, um, trying to hit while you're moving is pretty difficult. And again, you know, first shot taken 30 damage. That is, you know, that way of telling you, like, watch out buddy, you need to play the tutorial the way we want you to. This is a warning, but it, things will get harder and harder from here on in. So let's, let's try what I tried before again. We took out a couple of them, which should make um, things a lot easier. Let's take out the most dangerous tank first. I think that k is supposed to spot you uh, when you start firing at it. Now what you see me do, this is important for higher tier battles, um, eventually. Um, you will get spotted if you, if you're sitting like this and you fire at one of those vehicles, they will spot you. Because um, you can see through the bushes and they will see you when you fire or they got close. But when it's opaque, they won't be able to see the one who's firing at them under no normal circumstances. Now, this is an important thing. There are two ways to win a battle normally. It's either kill all the enemies or destroy, uh, K 
capture their base. And capturing a base, their base can be the tactical solid decision in some cases. Um, for example, base capture in progress. <clears throat> for example, if you are fairly outnumbered, there are a couple of slow tanks on the enemy team on the other side of the map, you might want to choose to capture the base. Um, that might be the tactically more sound choice. Now I knew where that guy was coming from, so... Just use that rock to your advantage, because the last time I was sitting here Two thinking they would come the from that B1 um, kind of area. And I got shot in the side, didn't die because of it, but it was a surprise. It was certainly a surprise. Now, capturing the enemy base won't always be the best option, and there are game modes where capturing the enemy base won't work, or won't work as well and people still try but the bases are pretty important and um, don't ignore the base but don't always go for the base either if you catch my drift but i will go into that uh more in depth receiving a new um later on in the series so okay we got 1250 xp we research everything on the tank um and there's no way but forward. We already got the light tractor. It's completely um, researched. You have all the lines you can go in. You chose for the Panzer 35T. Now you're going to the Panzer 38T. So we will research it. The vehicle has been researched. Uh, we can now can purchase, it. purchase it as well. And we have gold to spare. Um, not everybody has the gold to spare, so um, don't think that this is mandatory. Um, I would say that regimental school, the 75% crew skill, is the least you want. The 50%, maybe on low tiers when you're starting out, but after, I think after tier 3, you want at least a 75%. Um, if you are going to buy gold, you want the 100%. Just my opinion. But I will go into that in depth as well later on in this series. Let's just focus on the tutorial for now. Okay, so here we can see we have a 100% skilled crew and that means that the reload is 2.21. If you have a 50% crew, the reload will be um, will show up red, and the number will be higher because this it, these are the stats, at least the rate of fire, the reload time, the aim time. It's all with a 100% crew. Now, six cents is the skill that you skill saw um, in the battle. That's the light bulb that pops up whenever you are spotted. But remember, um, it will only activate after about three seconds of being spotted. So concealment, um, especially for the low tiers, I think that concealment is a better choice over repairs or firefighting. Um, firefighting I only have on vehicles that already have either repairs or concealment um, where I don't really need the other one but again crew skills I will go into detail much later um, the only thing important for now is that a crew of 100% will perform much much better than a 75 50% crew and it will make a big difference okay now 
we will go into repair kits, medical kits and fire extinguishers or other consumables you can use to further the longevity of your tank. Um, we have two large, a large repair kit and a large first aid kit. And a manual fire extinguisher. Um, I have a really, really absurdly high amount of um, automatic fire extinguishers. And I am starting to use those in tanks that easily get set on fire. But normally I use the manuals as well. In my opinion, they are the better choice. Track destroyed. Use the repair kit. Okay, we can use the repair kit, but we're not going to immediately. Um, what this tutorial also doesn't tell you is the usage of different types of ammunition, because normally, under normal circumstances, I think I would have used um, the high explosive ammo against that tank destroyer because it's got fairly low armor, fairly low amounts of armor, and will take more damage from high explosives. Now there are vehicles where you want to use AP ammo against. Take it from me only using high explosive damage because it's hot, it has the higher average damage isn't that smart. I made that mistake when I first started playing this game and I found out the hard way. And again, uh, I will go into more depth um, about these sort of uh, things uh, later on in my series. Now I think this is the point, yeah, I got set on fire. Um, fire just does damage over time. Unless you extinguish it, so having at least a fire extinguisher is the least you want. Another tank destroyed. Again, here I would have used a high explosive damage. Two shots into that turret. Three shots into that turret, or well, the gun shield. Um, it would have severely hampered his performance. Yeah, shooting on the move decreases your accuracy. Here you can see I shot off its track and I'm still damaging him. If you shoot the front wheel, um, you take off its track, or you can take off its track and you will be able to damage the enemy tank. Here you can see this is orange. The chances of bouncing are pretty high. Um, and this is red, so the chances of penetrating is extremely slim. He will damage my crew member, if I'm correct, if I remember correctly, or else we won't have any um, tutorial on that. So, hmm, that might not be the case. Okay, medium tank is coming from the streets. So yeah, uh, your crew can get damaged. If they do, you can put them just back in. Uh, if your repair kit or medical kit isn't on cooldown. So we got some XP and credits again. Equipment and consumables. First. Consumables. Here you can see the different kinds of ammo you have. It's 
generally AP and an APCR or heat and HG. There are tanks um, which have a different ammo loadout, which, for example, don't have APCR or heat, but another AP round with more penetration. Uh, every one of those has its benefits and its, its negatives. So, yeah. Equipment, Equipment will improve your vehicle, but as you can see, some pieces of equipment are extremely spent expensive um, and let's win a random battle and don't worry this isn't a true random battle this is a bot random battle so okay first aid kit treat your crew members if they get damaged the large first aid kit um, will heal all crew members that got damaged a large repair kit will repair all the damage to modules that your vehicle has taken it won't restore hit points a fire extinguisher will extinguish fires on an automatic fire extinguisher which is the equivalent of the large uh, repair kit and first aid kit will automatically extinguish a fire so you will only take one thick uh, one tick of uh, fire damage instead of the prolonged uh, reaction time of you pressing the six button or whatever you have set for fire extinguishing. Um, the small versions of the repair kit and first aid kit, you have to manually select whichever module or crew member you want to repair. I will repeat this uh, later on. Here you can see, if you're out in the open, uh, you're more easily spotted. Um, light tanks, again I will go over this later in the series, light tanks have a special ability which um, means that they will be harder to spot even while out in the open. If you are close to the bush and you fire, you will get spotted. If you do not fire, you will remain concealed until an enemy gets too close. And if you are buying objects, you will remain concealed until an enemy gets too close. If he were to pull back to about 50 meters or 15 meters behind the bush it will go opaque you can fire through it into your enemy but you won't be able to spot your enemy for yourself anymore but you won't be spotted in return um, if you capture the enemy base 100 percent you win if you destroy all enemy vehicles you win um, but the same goes for the enemy of course if you move, your dispersion is higher than when you're stationary and fully aimed. Pretty straightforward, I guess. And we already saw all of those. Um, Mission, capture the enemy. There are vehicles that are extremely good at firing on the move. Um, especially the high tier American medium tanks. They um, kind of specialize in firing on the move, especially the M48A1 um, pattern, that's the tier 10 American medium tank. Um, it's pretty decent at firing on the move because of its ammo and its dispersion values. Now this is the first real map that we play on. All the other maps are in the game, but they are much larger than we had been able to play on, so that this is the first real map um, my tank isn't that fast sadly and that means that we're beat it to the top of the hill by a BT-7 that means that we have to play this a little bit more strategically. Uh, last playthrough of this I played with the American medium tank. The medium the M what is it? M2 medium or something like that. As you can see my dispersion just increases drastically whenever I move because that L60 in front of me is constantly moving as well. This is pretty 
good compared to actual low tier battles with new players. I can tell because sometimes I help my sister-in-law become better at this game and go up the ranks um, and then we have to play some low tiers. I don't mind playing low tiers, it's just... Yeah, I... <laughs> just the higher tiers are more fair for someone like me or her boyfriend or some other friends of ours. Uh, because we know how the game works and playing against the low tier players is... Well, they don't even have a chance to learn the game, so to say. To get better at the game. So now we're on top of the hill and this is a pretty important position. If you are playing against regular enemies. So let's see if we can slide off without dying. And we can. I mean, this is a tank. Of course we can. No, you will actually fall and die if you're unlucky. Let's try to hit his driver. Are you damaging me? So, um, yeah, you can see I'm just going around the map. I'm trying to hit the enemies. Oh yeah, I can't penetrate his side armor, right? His side plate is pretty well armored, I guess. Okay, my engine is knocked out. It needing a little repair time but in the meantime let's whittle down this M to medium um, let's move on and see if we can take out more enemies um, yeah like I said this is no actual representation representation of an actual battle but it's pretty close some people are that um, oblivious to what's going on around them outflanking your enemy is one of the best ways to defeat them especially if he has no support you can move around him you might be able, if you will, do lots and lots of damage, but it won't work and every time, trust me. I've had situations where I thought, oh, that guy is all by, him, by himself, I go in and he has a lot of friends with him, or one friend even, and my plan just gets fucked up. Or he gets a lucky hit and I'm not able to do what I actually wanted to do. So let's see if we can still get kill on him yes we can I should join the Obama administration I feel let's see if we can get up to the 10 kills shall we oh no kill steal <laughs> So this was the tutorial. It it's pretty decent for the lower tiers. Trust me, it for the low tiers it is. Uh, gold and premium. Yeah. To purchase premium account time. Premium account increases the amount the mission has been successfully completed. I will go into that sort of stuff later on. You don't need it per se. I think that of the two, well, both are pretty useful. Um, having gold will means you can get more 100% um, cruise. You can buy more 
uh, garage slots. Having premium means you will go through the tech trees a lot, lot faster. Um, first, we're going to go into a couple of things regarding settings. Um, which is pretty important because that will help you determine stuff more easily. Um, yeah, uh, this is the advent calendar. They want you to use money. <laughs> no, it's it's not like war gaming is inherently evil, but uh, let's just say there has been some stuff going on. Yeah. First, let's go into the settings. Now there is something that I still need to enable. Horizontal stabilization in sniper mode. That means that if you if you have it disabled, you're aiming at somebody, but you turn your hull, your gun will move off target. Um, with the horizontal stabilization in sniper mode, that means that if you are aiming at somebody, you move the hull, the turret stays pointed where it is. Um, okay, so let's go over um, some of these things. Um, sensor offensive words and chat messages, you can do that. Uh, I don't mind, I'm 27, nearly 28, I can handle offensive words. Um, and besides, it's only your own team, so you can't even see the messages of the enemy. Hide spam, yeah, you might want to do that. A couple of people do like to spam. Display dates, yeah, display times. This is it's useful, but not really necessary. Except, accept invitations from friends in the garage. I'm going to accept that one. Accept the invitation to platoon and battle. Uh, you can join a dynamic platoon. If you get invited or you invite somebody in the battle, uh, you will get in platoon, uh, platooning gifts slight bonuses to XP and credits and not a lot but a little um, except friend request platooning with friends is one of the best things um, in this game if you ask ask me uh, you can put this on if you don't want to be contacted by other people and um, some people grieve after they lost the match and they're gonna contact you and tell you that you're a noob and that they are much better uh, do with this what you want you can disable chat with allies if you don't want any of that shit. Receive clan notifications, yeah, sure. Um, a lot of this is down to personal preference. It's not... I wouldn't recommend putting it like this. I'm just... have it that way. Um, let's already click apply. Uh, random battle types. You can put on assault. Um, it will become available after tier 6. Encounter will become available after researching tier 4. Grand Battle is only for tier 10s, if I'm correct. Either tier 10s or tier 8s at the moment. I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to put the salt bag on. I put that off because I was trying to get missions done in my light tanks, if I'm correct. And I would just get constantly put on assault maps where I didn't have the room to do what I needed to do in my lights. Um, so standard battles is just normal 30 versus 30, uh, two bases, it's either capture the base or kill all the enemies. Encounter is also, oh well not 30 versus 30, it's 15 versus 15. Encounter is basically the same, only there is only one base and it's neutral, so Either you capture the base, or the enemy captures the base, or you destroy all enemy vehicles. Um, one thing to keep in mind, encounter battles take longer to cap. Um, the time of the battle is only 10 minutes if I'm correct, though I'm not sure. Um, but capturing the base will take 3 minutes. Or four minutes opposed to the one minute and 20 seconds it would or the one minute and 40 seconds it would in a normal battle for one tank it will go faster with other tanks but it won't go as fast as a standard battle cap assault 
One team is defending the cap, one team is assaulting the map, the cap. Um, same as the encounter battle, capping takes longer. Um, and I'm definitely sure that this game mode takes 10 minutes. So, you have a limited amount of time to assault. It's to put up pressure so that people don't start camping and waiting out time. Um, it puts on pressure for the defenders because uh, they have to actively defend. They can't hide in a corner and let you go to them per se. Um, sometimes it does mean that the defenders can just run away while you try to cap. Because the battle will run out before you have cap. Um, the thing is, the defenders win by default if you do not cap the base or destroy the enemy tanks. In encounter, if there are tanks left standing, at the end of the battle, the battle runs out. There are two tanks on each team. It will be a draw. A standing battle, if the time runs out, no team has been destroyed, no cap has been captured... Even if it's a 1 versus 5, it will be a draw. In Assault, even if the enemy team has all of their tanks and they haven't been able to cap or destroy the last enemy vehicle on the team, the defenders win. And Grand Battle is a 30 versus 30 on larger maps. Uh, with the same time restraint of 15 minutes. Mm, vehicle panel, 1 level or 2 level. Yeah, I don't really know. Displace that. Oh, yeah, that's this panel here. Uh, display stats upon hovering over a slot in the garage. Okay. I've got battle recording on because I put my battles on YouTube as well if I have some good ones. Uh, display marks of excellence if you are good enough in vehicles. And I think it's from tier 4 and up or tier 5 and up. Um, if you're good enough in vehicles, you will receive marks of excellence there. Stripes on the gun barrel or stars or whatever um, It's just a way to show that you really like a tank or you're really good in a tank I will show it in the garage in a moment uh, This play service selection upon game launch. Yeah per Both peripheral personal preference. I don't mind seeing non-historical elements in the game because I've got a couple of tanks with non-historical elements So battle in phase I like seeing the tear of the enemy vehicle. Sometimes vehicles look really like another vehicle. It's always useful to see the tear of the vehicle. Minimap transparency. I don't really care. I see enough. Enable optics effect. It's not mode. It just puts a um, bluish tinge or tint. Or it, it when you go into snipe mode, it will look a little bit more bluish. So that's the only thing, it's more a visual effect than anything else. Show and post mortem mode, vehicle destroy your vehicle. Only if that vehicle is visible. If you got killed by an invisible vehicle, for say artillery that has just killed you from the other side of the map, that hasn't been spotted, you won't see the post mortem mode vehicle. Enable the dynamic camera. I don't really know what this does. I have it. I don't have enabled, and I don't really mind. Horizontal stabilization. I just explained. Enable the times 16 and times 25 view. If you do not enable this, you will only go as far as times 8. So, out of tank view, two times zoom, four times zoom, or eight times zoom. I like the times 16 and times 25 because it makes it easier to, sh uh, to shoot at weak points on long range. Restrict toggling the sniper mode to the shift key. That means that you won't be able to use your wheel to get into the sniper mode. I have this disabled because I normally use the wheel anyways. Enable server radical. Um, I know that people like circumflexes have this enabled. Um, and I think I might start enabling it. But it's not mandatory. I haven't been playing with that until, well, now. Show vehicle markers on battle score panel. Uh, useful to know that whatever just shot you 
was maybe a tank destroyer hiding out or a heavy tank hiding out at the back of the map or something like that. Display camera direction beam on a mini map, it's just for you. You will be able to see on a mini map which way you're looking. Display auger fire for the SPG on a mini map, uh, useful to know how far you can rotate your gun left and right. Display notifications when causing damage, um, I like having this. Um, some SPGs don't have a firing arc, um, and then of course it won't show on the minimap. Um, there are some that just have a 360 degree um, arc of fire, a 180 and 180 to each side. Expanded minimap features. I think this is for these features. I will go over that in a while, in a short bit. Tips on the battle loading screen. I like seeing them. Some people don't. Sometimes it actually tells you something that you have forgotten or that you aren't doing. Tips on the rank battle loading screen. I don't play rank, so do with this as you like. The view, view range indicators on the mini-map. Now this is important. You have view range circle, maximum spotting range and a draw circle. Let's go from the outside in. The draw circle is, if I'm correct, a yellow circle. That is the maximum distance that you will see an enemy. You won't spot it, but you will see that enemy up to that distance. And that distance is, if I'm correct, 600 meters. Beyond that, you won't be able to see the vehicles. You can still hit them, of course, but you won't be able to see them. Um, the maximum spotting range is the maximum, the absolute maximum range at which vehicles can be spotted. Your maximum view range, however, might be higher. The maximum spotting range is 446 meters, if I'm correct. You can have vehicles with 500 meters view range. It won't mean that you will be able to spot up to 500 meters. No, you will spot up to 446. That is the range, the minimum range at which vehicles will become spot it or well the maximum range you will be able to spot an enemy and then you have your view range circle this is your actual view range i will go over this in the garage and second to make it a little bit easier uh garage camera rotation when idle for 30 seconds and do with this what you want i don't really mind uh garage camera animation when moving the mouse cursor ah uh, sure so let's for now get back into the garage. Um, we were, I was talking about your view range. Now, as you can see for this premium tank that you can get now uh, for Christmas, it's 320 meters. All that stuff on the screen, the direct directives, the chocolate, the coated optics, the vents, uh, all that stuff will be able to increase that. I can spot up to a maximum of 446 meters. My view range is 320, so I'm not even close to that. Now, my tier 10 light tank, on the other hand, has a maximum view range of 482 meters. The spotting range, however, is only 446. That extra 36 meters of view range isn't wasted. The higher your view range, the more easily it is to counter the concealment rating of an enemy vehicle. So, to put it this way, this vehicle has a 31.76% chance, oh well, 31.76% concealment rating. That means that this vehicle um, decreases 31 or nearly 32 percent of the view range of the enemy trying to spot it. So my view range is lowered by 31 percent. The higher your view range, the less 
impactful this is, so the sooner you will spot an enemy vehicle. Now let's see, my mouse only has a 3.43 chance, uh, not chance, um, concealment rating. And that's mainly down to Brothers in Arms and the camo scheme that it has. Why does the Brothers in Arms skill not work? I don't know. Ah, uh, not without the concealment perk trained. So I actually need to get concealment trained on this vehicle in order, of, in order to have Brothers in Arms work. Yeah, so this is nearly a 3.5% camo value when it's stationary. That means that my Rheinmetall Panzerwagen will remove only 3.5% from its total view range. So it will spot a mouse out in the open from 446 meters. It's pretty nice. Now the view range on this thing is slightly higher because I have one more um, because I have a couple more skills going for this crew so that's basically how the view range works you won't be able to spot until the maximum draw distance but you will be able to to spot to the maximum view range and increase your view range to make it harder for camouflage tanks to stay hidden so there's that. Um, let's go back in. Graphics. I'm not going to go over this. This is just what can your PC or laptop handle. Sound. The same. Controls. I wouldn't really mind leaving this as it is. So... Yeah, radical. You can change this to all kinds of stuff. I just like the A shape. I just do diagonal, horizontal, radial, dashed. I like this indicator most. And when you're in sniper mode, you can you can get mods for this as well to get other radicals, markers. I like seeing it here. Which kind of vehicle? The name of the vehicle and the hit points. You can also go for percentage, for example. I don't really like to. Or you can just hide it. I like to see how many hit points because then I can see oh. The vehicle is in 200 hit points, that might be a one-shot for me. I do the same thing with our own team, only seeing the name when I press um, the ALT key. And destroyed, same thing. I like having that information. Battle notifications, this is all what you want. This might be too much for certain people. Um, I like seeing the direction where some fire is coming from. If I know that I am angled that way and somebody shooting me from this side that can't penetrate me, somebody shooting me from this side that can but has low damage, I might stay in that, that direction. Um, this will show you, you will take damage, you will receive a critical hit or you have bounced. Um, this as well. You can do it with that what you want. Um, battle events is just, in my opinion, useful to see um, what happens. So I have it all enabled. And only the three most recent are displayed anyways. So even if 50 things happen, only the three most recent will appear on top. So it will stack down it will disappear from the screen anyways uh, a lock useful if you're doing missions I'll also here I like to see everything I have the map border out in a dotted line you can go for a wall or not displayed upon pressing something or when approaching always highlight might be the better of all 
Um, and there's this personal missions. Do with that with what you want. I like seeing it. So um, I hope that this episode was informative. I will go into more depth about a lot more things in future episodes. So until then, take care and I hope.